Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we are talking about being busy as fudge. I hope you're busy as heck and this is going to make a lot of sense to you. Hopefully we're all going crazy, but either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? How are you? Thanks for hanging out. I don't always look like this as much. Uh, Allergies are killing me today, so I do apologize. But if it's your first time here, have a look around. There is 200 episodes to catch up on. That's a feat. 200 weeks straight we've done this, and I've not missed one episode. Huh? That's pretty darn good. So go back, watch them. Hopefully it's better than a cat video. Hopefully you go, wow, this is awesome. I want to order all my supplies through him. Well, that's what I'm here for. Shameless plug time. I am a rep with windowcleaner.com and I would love to earn your business. My number, 862-312-2026. If you're getting a piece of paper, I'll wait. It's 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Call me, text me. Most people uh, just text me uh, after they put everything in their cart and be like, yo, Jersey, my cart is good, man. This is my address. These are the last four. And I run the car to cost you nothing extra. It's super, super simple. And I get some cheddar. It's like a virtual high five of awesomeness. So if you want to be super awesome, make sure to do that. And I will give you a sticker. Uh, the new Cool Kids sticker. Finally. I've been telling you guys about this. We accidentally ordered too many of the first ones. And I don't want to waste them. So the new sticker is coming out in like a week's time. The new sticker is super, super dope, actually. It's a new limited edition sticker, of course, so if you haven't ordered yet, order to get that sticker, and the new one will be out. Uh, It's like hologram and super awesome. Yeah. Anyway, check it out. It's super cool. If you like stickers, I know a magazine. All these stickers that are behind me, see? Almost all of them come from American Window Cleaner Magazine. So... You have to get your copy of American Window Cleaner Magazine. This latest issue is uh, mailing now. So go to awcmag.com, get a subscription. And that would be like the ultimate of awesome. So go do that. But anyway, with the show today, we're talking about being busy as fudge. Uh, Hopefully you guys are busy, uh, but hopefully you're not too busy. Now, if you're new in business... There is something to be said about being too busy. You don't believe that you could be too busy until you're too busy. The big thing about uh, being busy at the wrong time or being too busy is that you let stuff fall to the wayside. I know guys who like won't even do paperwork or anything throughout the busy season because they're just too busy. That is absolutely absurd. You cannot let anything fall to the wayside. It's extremely hard. Extremely hard to do that. But you can't let anything fall to the wayside. I hope you're all busy. I know we're busy here at windowcleaner.com. The busiest we've ever been by like far, by like 200% busy. Crazy. I never got, I'm never too busy for you guys though. Make sure to put your orders. That's two shameless plugs in one. Plus a magazine plug? Man, I'm on a roll of just suck today. Sorry. Okay, so... (laughs) So, uh, being busy, I do also know people who have actually destroyed their business from being too busy. What happens is they let so much go to the wayside, they don't follow cardinal rules, and all of a sudden, things just sink all around them, and then they fall. The business doesn't recover. They've ruined so many customers. They've lost customers, and they just get so burnt out they can't pull out. I know a guy who had like eight employees at one point and he got so busy and started losing employees that all of a sudden he was just doing all the work himself, which you cannot do the work of eight employees yourself. You have to drop some things. You're not doing the same amount of work. You're letting things to the wayside. Like everything is getting left behind. Now you're working seven days a week. You don't have time to do anything like get new shirts or clean the trucks or simple little things that just come with standard whatever. So you have to be very, very careful because it's going to affect your bottom line. If you don't believe me, try it. Be too busy. No, don't try it. It's bad. 
So the first thing that I would say that you need to do is systems. All right, show is over. That could really literally be the end of the show if I wanted, but it's not. Systems are huge. Everybody talks about them. I talk about them. People always go, oh, you're talking more about systems. But the thing with a system is if it's down to be done, it will get done. So we talk about marketing calendars, right? Putting everything down so that you know exactly that the, you know, once the light switches, the third week on a Tuesday, you're going to do this. The fifth week, you're gonna, and you always go off of that first before anything else. And a system will make it so that everything is the same no matter what is going on. Now, if you don't believe me that systems are awesome or you're just tired of me hearing it, I'm going to give you the same thing. A lot of you are listening. You're going to go, oh, he's going to talk about McDonald's. And you would be right. Uh, in every McDonald's that is in the entire country, there are pictures of the burgers expanded. So you know where the meat goes compared to the cheese goes compared to the lettuce go. You know that you do one or two clicks of this sauce or one or two clicks of this sauce. You put the sauce on first. You put the sauce. It's done so that not only is there a complete guide where I could hand you a book and go, this is all of McDonald's. You know the entire company. But it's done that way so that if they're in a busy rush or they're not, it gets done the same way every single time. That is a system. That is literally what a system is, is just keeping you on track. Now, there's a lots of things you can do systems, but you have to follow it. The biggest thing is like, if you're a journaler, if you write stuff down ever, I always think I'm going to be like three times a year I start and then I'm not good at it. But if you do that or you take notes or anything, you have to go back through and read those notes. And you have to go back and regularly read those notes because if you only check it every couple months, well, all of a sudden it's like, oh man, two months ago I was going to do this, right? So if you're doing systems and you're not following the systems, you're not reading the systems, you're not looking at that the first thing you do every single day, you're going to miss it. Don't go through all the effort of building a system for anything. We'll talk about which kind of ones can be systemized, but don't go and build systems for anything if you're not going to follow it. The follow-up is 1,000% more important than the system. Even if you have one system and it's like the first thing I do when I come in is I make sure that the squeegee rubber is full on the truck. If that's all you have is your system, but you do it every single day, guess what? There is not a day that goes by that they will be out of rubber on the cruise. Your truck won't ever be out of rubber because you followed the system. You know it's always done. If you're super busy or you had a long day or you're tired or you're not tired or vacation or even more importantly, if somebody else comes in and you're on vacation, they look at it and go, I got to do this. It gets done. Systems. Systems, man. You got to follow systems. They just make sure that everything gets done. And the big thing is with being busy the number one thing that people jack up is that they let things get missed, right? Ah, oh, that's not as important. I'll do it tomorrow. I got to If you do systems, I'll tell you something. Uh, one of the systems that we had was that every single time, this is winter and it may not apply to you and yada, 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 but just to idea. Every single time a truck came back to the shop in the winter from plowing, we washed the truck. We, we had an inside bay area so even in the winter we could hose them down not everybody's got that luxury i understand but that means that every single time somebody jumped into the truck they looked good at least got rinsed off of the salt and crud and everything else that right there and that one upkeep thing meant that no matter what the truck was used for last the next crew that gets in it in the morning is going to be a window crew it's going to look like a window truck something so little we never missed it no one would ever come back like oh my gosh i just worked like 23 hours, uh, park the truck, I'm going home. No, they'd go, oh man, I worked 23 hours. Let's wash the truck and go home. It never got missed. If it's a system, it never gets missed and always gets done. There's a lot of things out there that you're going to miss. You're going to not do. Like advertising, like sales, like certain paperwork or certain filings or certain this or certain that. All those get missed if you don't do systems. And that's when a company fails. I know guys who all of a sudden in the fall or after the, the spring rush, middle of summer, they go back and look. I'm like, oh, who owes this money? Well, now all of a sudden it's like three months go by. It's so much harder to collect 
after three months if you didn't do it all regularly. You have to make sure that you don't let anything fall through the cracks. Another big thing that you have to do when you're busy as fudge is that you have to make things easier and faster. Now, here's the part, and it doesn't happen every show, but every now and then where people go, well, yeah, that's what you say because you're a sales rep, man. And that would be if you're in California, that's how you talk. That's how everybody talks in California, right? Uh, No, but, um, and it is true to a degree because I'm going to talk about some equipment, but the big thing is, is that I realized really early on, maybe a year or two into business, that I can only do so much, right? I don't want to work 34 hours a day. I don't want to do that. If you want to tell me I can't count, you can send me an email, jersey at windowcleaner.com. Let me know how dumb I am. But I don't want to work 34 hours a day. I don't want to work 24 hours a day. I don't want to work 17 hours a day. The big thing is, is that I only can do so much in that time. So what do you do? You either hire so that there's two of you, right? Or you do more work in less time. How do you do that? Well, if I hand you a toothbrush and I say, hey, go clean that window, it would get done. That one window would take you an hour, but it would get done. So what do you do? You get better tools. You get like a bigger strip washer, right? You get, well, uh, you know, I don't want to have to go back to the bucket. I can do, you know, a little bit. What cuts off a couple minutes a day if I carry solution with me, right? Well, I don't want to get a pole if I need it. I'm going to carry a pole with me. I'm going to go to water fed. I know. A water fed system on two stories or more is going to cut your time in half, right? Uh, You know, you're doing a full day of giant windows, all commercial. If you went to a full, you know, uh, 18 inch scrubber, but a, you know, 36 inch channel, it's going to speed things up. If you have everything on you, it's going to speed things up. If you have a tighter route, it's going to speed things up. You can get more work done than you're doing now. Fair? You'd, You'd agree with that? It's just being more efficient in what you do. And that part really comes into what you do. Now, I would never, ever, 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 ever tell you that you're not working hard. Never. Because you know if you are or not. And it doesn't matter if you are or not because it's your business, right? But the big thing comes down to is that you can get more work done. Always, right? Always get more work done. Technically, if you stood in the back of a truck and you were water feeding a building and the truck was just driving, you wouldn't even have to walk. You'd just be going through and somebody else... Like, you could be stupid, you know, efficient if you really decided to, but there's a happy medium. You could always be a little more efficient than you are now. Now, when we're super, super busy, we have 8 to 10 hours of work in a day, especially, you know, when the sun starts going up, it's really hard to go home when the sun's still out. We have a lot of work, but we have to get more of that work done so we can still do the other things that always have to get done. There's always sales. There's always marketing. There's always all the other stuff that happens no matter how busy or not busy you are. So being able to do more work faster or in a shorter amount of time allows you to get more work done in less time. Invest in some equipment. I just had somebody yesterday, actually. Yeah, it was yesterday. Who called me. By the way, what's up if you're watching? You're the man. Uh, But he was like, hey, I got this system. I kind of pieced it together myself like a year or two ago. And it sucks. It just sucks. I, every day I feel like I'm doing something. The flow is not what I want it to be. The thing is just, it's embarrassment when I show up to jobs. I got to mess with this thing every time. It seems like there's some problem. I just want to work more efficiently. Just let's do a new system. Okay? I know. Take it with a grain of salt. I'm a salesman. But that is awesome. He will never be to a job where the system, you know, maybe not never. But he will not be at the job every single time where the system's not working. The flow rate will be what he wants. It's predictable, professional. He shows up and he looks awesome. He doesn't have to pull a, junk, a pile of junk and, and pull out wrenches to fix it every time. Right? That is becoming more efficient. Being efficient is fast. We are a labor-based industry. I charge you per my hour. Right? However much work I can get done in the hour doesn't necessarily matter. It's because it's the hour. If I can work faster, I make more money, right? Right? If I do something that I am bidding to take four hours and I do it in two hours, guess what? I just made twice the amount of money. If I'm doing $100 an hour, but I did it in half the time, I'm now making $200 an hour. I can actually get more work done in the same amount of time. If I do a job 
in two hours that usually took me four, I have now two free hours. I've already made all that money. I'm making more money, but now I got two more hours that I can do something else, right? Working efficient. We can always work on efficiency. And the big thing is, is that when you're busy, efficiency goes to the way, oh man, when we slow down, we're going to have to redo that. Oh, we're going to have to do this when, uh, man, through winter, oh, we're going to, it's spring. You cannot talk about what things are you going to do to make you faster in winter. You're going to lose nine months of doing it. You have to do it now. And the only way to do that now is to free yourself up with everything else. Another one, and probably the biggest part of all of this, in my opinion, is delegating. Delegating, delegating, delegating. A lot of you, and I am the same, like, I just want to do everything myself. Look at all this money I'm going to save. Blah. There's so many things you can delegate, meaning paying somebody else to do. Now, we've talked about this before. It's going to cost you in labor time lost, all that. It's going to cost you two, three times more money to do it yourself. It will. Because you're not sitting on your thumb. You're not just waiting. I got nothing to do. I might as well do this taxes. Right? We're super, super busy. So here's a few things you can kind of delegate that I love, love, love to delegate. First one's tax. It's the worst time of year. I know it's a four-letter word, even though it's not. But taxes are just a pain in the butt. I don't know taxes, and you don't know taxes, unless Dan Platt is watching. But we don't know that stuff, right? Actually, the likes, too. I think... uh, I think the likes would uh, would would know that. But I hate taxes. I hate all that stuff. And I'm not going to spend a bunch of time to do it wrong and pay way more than I should anyway. I hire someone. Speaking of hiring, I also let somebody else do my hiring. Recruiting services exist. Again, Dan Plata, Blue Sky Services. That exists. They will hire people for you. Tell them what they want. They do all the work. Hire people. I can hire a company to run my payroll. I can hire a company like a temp service. We've talked about this a billion times. I can hire a temp company to run my employees. Now I don't have to worry about everything that comes with employees. I got somebody. I just call them and be like, hey, take care of this. I can delegate my marketing. Marketing is huge. How are you doing ads? What do your templates look like? We sell templates, right? What about printing? I got to find the cheap. We do printing. Like there's so many things you can do that. If you are doing uh, door hangers, but you don't have the time to hand out the door hangers, delegate, meaning go to EDDM. It's different. You got to change the pieces and all that. But let the post office send it out. It costs you a little bit. But again, you're getting more done by delegating. Website. The website's huge. You have to have somebody, A, that knows what they're doing. Otherwise, your website looks like an angel fire geocities piece of garbage. Uh, but the other thing is it has to be new. It has to be fresh. It has to be relevant. If you're not changing things in your website, your ranking's going down. People, Google's like, oh, this guy's done. He's gone. Nothing's on his website. Nothing's changing. Websites are huge. You know, I've talked about Justin Monk a thousand billion times. Justin Monk, Monk SEO, absolutely the most amazing like guy in any industry, in any service I've ever dealt with. He just does so freaking amazing he's just great to deal with his staff isn't anyway somebody like that i just can give everything off to hey i got new pictures coming your way once a week it's on my uh uh, my system every monday i send you new pictures put those pictures and it's always doing it a call or an email or a text is way less time than you actually doing the work same thing with vas if you've ever thought about getting a va they're extremely valuable they're, uh, if you're getting a foreign VA, they do work usually overnight, but a VA is going to charge you a lot less money and they do mundane. They love ranking information. They love doing certain things. You know, it's just easy data stuff. Maybe that's an option. I can shoot them a message and be like, Hey, uh, we need uh, two new ads to come up for this. Boom. It's done. Launched. I get like notice. Hey, everything's up in live. Here you go. I don't have to do any of it. SEO is another one. Going back to Justin Monk, you guys know my SEO. He took a company that did not exist to the first page of Google in three months. Now, that's not going to happen to everybody, but blew me away. But if you're not doing SEO in the busy season, you're missing out. You've heard of that whole strike while the iron's hot. That basically means that if you let something cool down, you're going to work 200 times harder to do the same thing than when it's piping hot. That's where we are right now. You're piping hot. Your business is going crazy. People want you. They're hungry. 
show them a cheeseburger, right? It's the reason that gum is in the checkout aisle. That's where you buy gum if you want gum because no one goes to the grocery store to buy gum. What they do is they're standing in line and they go, oh, I need that. It's right in front of me. I want it not. That's where we are right now. You have to advertise harder than you ever have right now because you have to strike when the iron's hot. Your advertising dollars will go a thousand percent better than ever right now. And if you try to advertise in the middle of winter compared to now, you were talking about thousands of percent ROI better because people want their windows, their windows cleaned now. You have to delegate that. Get the SEO up. Get your website. Get that marketing. What about ads? Facebook ads. If you're not doing that right now, you are losing. You can't advertise on Facebook in the middle of winter. Nobody wants that. You can't wait until you're slow to advertise. That is the wrong and dumbest thing you can do. If you wait until you're slow to advertise, no one is hiring. They're not looking for a window cleaner when it's slow. Otherwise, they'd be calling you. Yes, you can get a couple from that. But the big thing is, is when your light switch happens and all of a sudden it's like, man, I got 50 calls yesterday. It's because it's in everybody's brain, whatever the weird uh, planetary alignments have happened, it's in their brain, right? So you need to jump on that opportunity and you need to advertise. Facebook ads, you should have campaigns going all the time. AdWords, that's Google. You should be doing that at all time. You can do a Facebook ad for five bucks a day. You can do three of them and if you're spending $15 a day, I'm pretty sure $15 a day is worth getting multiple calls a day. You need to be doing that now. But you also don't have the time to do it now or most of us don't have the knowledge. Find somebody who does. Find somebody who does. I also think that taking calls, like uh, answering your phone, is highly overrated. But I do that. I answer my phone all day. I'm on the phone all stinking day. I'm talking about you guys in services. Taking phone calls takes up your time. They're going to talk for 15 minutes. Oh, you know, uh, actually, my cousin's sister. Uh, no, no, no. My my cousin's... Hmm. George, well, who is... That's what you're doing. You're sitting on a phone while somebody's doing all that because they're nice and you're trying to work. Have somebody else do that. Pay somebody. There's lots of companies. Jill's Office and all those other ones that are out there that are answering services. Not only does somebody answer every single time, it's somebody who's super polite takes every bit of information they want, and more importantly, they kill the spam calls. You know what drives me nuts is when, we'd like to get you on the first page of Google. Press one now. We've been been trying to get a hold of you about your car's extended warranty. I hate those. They're time wasters. Let them deal with that. Delegate. Another thing is follow-ups. If you're not using like a response bid, or something like Responsibid, where they're doing follow-ups to, to estimates, you're missing out on so... I just talked to a guy like a week ago. He doesn't do follow-ups on anything. He said he feels bad to follow up. He's like, well, I'm so busy that it just... I, I don't really want to follow up because I just can't take the work. Why are you advertising? Why are you spending money? You're losing all these people. You're going and you're doing estimates. You're bidding them out. And then they go, oh, great, well, let me call you back. And then you don't call them to follow up. You're just wasting time. You're wasting money. You cannot ever afford to not do follow-ups. Automate the follow-up. Set it up through Responsibility. Responsibility just sends emails. Like, hey, you got a quote uh, two days ago. I just wanted to see if you had any questions on it. Hey, you got a quote uh, a week ago now. I'd love to get you in there. Is there anything we can do? I'd love to take $20 off that service for you. Send work to something else. Delegate something programs and software it's like hiring somebody else if i have a program uh say i use monk we'll go back to monk seo say i use him for my website i use him for my seo i use him for absolutely everything he'll do i just hired an employee and it only cost me a couple hundred bucks a month no employee at all in your entire company only costs you a couple hundred bucks a month and is worth something. If I have a marketing plan in place and I have an SEO package and a website that's killer, I'm going to be making thousands, tens of thousands of dollars a month off of that. And I'm paying somebody a couple hundred bucks to take care of it and make sure it's awesome. Like these are no brainer things. Same thing. If I came to you and I said, Hey, I'll give you a thousand dollars right now. 
if you give me 500 bucks, just you give me 500 bucks and I'll give you a thousand dollars. You'd be like, okay, how many times can I do that? Right? Now, nothing's guaranteed in business, but the idea is if you can spend $200 for somebody and they turn around and produce a thousand dollars for you, or they produce a thousand on the low end, it's so worth it. So it's the same thing. You have to do that. It goes back to like truck wraps and stuff too. You put everything there and the, the returns back, but delegate that stuff. You're not out there with markers drawing your car wrap, right? If you have crappy vinyl and crappy would only be up to you because it's yours. If you think it's crappy and you don't get a lot of people calling on it because it's just a single color, whatever, small, hard to read, peeling off. Why have anything? Peel it off your car. It's not worth leaving a bad image. I'd rather leave no image because then you always have a chance later for a better image, right? Delegate. Most important thing, if you get anything, delegation. Another one is keep hiring. You have to A-B-H. A-B-H. Always be hiring. That is absolutely key because guess what? We're really, really busy now. If somebody leaves right now, you are in more hurt than ever because it's going to take you a week to get the ads together and applicants in and another week to do all the interviews and get people in with the HR. and everything. Now you're two weeks out. If you get all that part done, now you're just a day out. Now you can call somebody on a dime and be like, hey man, we still need somebody. Are you still available? Yeah, we'd love to hire you. Always hire. Always be hiring. You should always be doing the interview side. This is going through. Take a month or two maybe in the winter, but that's it. Every rest of the month, year, you should always be doing interviews. Always talking to people. Always trying to find the next one. You have to. You have to do that. Another thing, and the last kind of bit to this is you have to keep your quality up. Now, anybody that I know, let me rephrase that. 75% of the people that I know that had burned themselves out and closed down were because they got too busy. And a lot of times is they've done such crappy work that they've lost so many customers and got such a bad reputation. I mean, you can lose a customer. I get that. It happens. But what if you get a one-star review? What if you get 10, 20 one-star reviews? That's there forever. People like, oh, oh gosh, that's for the next 10 years. Anybody who looks at those reviews are going to see how crappy of work you did. Now, also preface this, keep this in mind. You do not have to focus on your um, work or quality as much as you think, but it cannot be garbage. If you go and do that, all of a sudden it's like you lose control of everything and now you got 10 reviews. That's killing. That kills you inside. 10 bad reviews. Oh my gosh, I can't. And then that haunts you forever and all of a sudden you get less people. Like it's why people work so hard to get five-star reviews. It's why they work so hard to get repeat business. You ruin that and you just destroy the company. By the way, the other 25% that ruined it have gotten to that point and it just is so much. They're like, I can't, I can't. Recover. Like I said, that guy that had eight employees, he went down to doing it himself. He just does enough to, you know, make his cheddar and, and he's happy with that. And that's cool. You could totally do that. But you get to a point where you're so far down the sand pit that you can't climb back up. Don't do that. Make sure you keep your quality up. Make sure that you have the time you need. Again, systems, make the systems, do the systems every single day. Don't mess up your systems. Make sure everything gets done. Don't let anything fall to the wayside. Make sure things can be done easier and faster. Delegate, number one thing. Keep hiring and always be hiring and keep your quality up. Those simple rules are going to help you through this busy time and I hope you're making a million bucks. I hope you're making as much money as all these trolls on the <laughs> the internet are pretending to make. I hope you're making that much. But by the way, drop me a comment down if you're watching on YouTube and a thumbs up. We've done uh, not a lot of uh, YouTube views. Um, I know we do like 10 times more on, uh, you know, podcasts, which is awesome. But go ahead. Let's do some back and forth. Let me know if you need any supplies. Please do call me. This is how I make my cheddar. If you've ever gotten anything from the show, it's an awesome way to pay me back. I get people say that, which is really weird when they're like, oh, dude, 
But you're so, like, thank you so much. I've it's, it's a little awkward. But I'm glad that a lot of you are getting something from this. And some of you are just here to hang out, which is super, super awesome. So either way, let me know. 862-312-2026 is my cell phone. But go out there and uh, be busy as fudge. But do it right. And more importantly, until next week, 